in 2000, you end up being locked up for a little bit. Yeah, what happened man. with that? Man. Oh, that was a, that was an ugly time, man. Cause and it wasn't just one time. I was in and out like and a out. revolving door. But that's how they get and you, man. And that's crazy. And it sucked too, cause um, uh, you know. But what really kind of led to that is like all the bullshit that the label was doing with uh with the money. And then I kind of, you know, cause I could have kind of stayed out of the streets. With, with with the way rapping was going, right, right. But with them bullshit like they was, I kind of went back to hustling, and then and got caught up. Next thing I know, yeah, man, I was getting busted. I had a good run though. I had a good run, it, and it, it got to the point. You know, I want to be the best at everything, and it got to the point where I tried to be the the baddest and biggest drug kingpin in Memphis, and. Man, you know, and everything else took a back seat because if you're gonna be like, if you're gonna try to be the best rapper, you can't do a lot of other stuff. And right. if you're gonna try to be the best dealer, you can't do a whole lot of other stuff. So I went, I, I just went too far. I mean, I I had a whole avenue to myself, six hotels. Oh wow, man, twenty girls. Uh. I mean, I even was crazy enough to bring the stove into my hotel room <laughs> to, to and, cook it and cook my, yo, wow. cook my dope up. Wow. And I look back and I be like, man. <laughs> and man, you know, right next door to where they were shooting Hustle and Flow. And um, and that was at the Crystal Palace. And since and since the, the guy didn't give me the leading role, he, he kind of gave me the leading role, but then he took it back. Wait, you tried out for Hustle and Flow, and they were going to give you the leading role? Oh, yeah. And then they oh, gave wow. it to... And then they gave it to Terrence like, Howard. So do, is it based off of you, oh, technically? Yeah, DJ. Yeah, um, the um, director, Craig Brewer. Yeah, me and Craig, cool. Craig got all my CDs. He got them on the couch. And he got them in the car. I met him at Selecto. Wow. I met him at the label. And um, when he first said, I'm going to do a movie, Hustle and Flow, everybody in the room laughed at him. And I was like, I ain't, I ain't laugh. I was like, for real? And everybody was like, he ain't don't do nothing, man, whatever. And four years later, it came together. And I was like, you ever, I'm, I, you know, you ever need me to be that, you know, that hustler, you da da And he was like, oh yeah, yeah. You already got the perm, yeah, I got you. And I was like, <laughs> But all do you right. think he wrote in the perm part because of you? Like, was that all inspired by you, you think? Man, you know what? I really never, you know, um, I really never like questioned him about it. Right. But uh, he definitely told me, he said, uh, you know, I got a man, you know, put some of your hustling. Uh, I got to put that in the movie. And so I was like, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm down. But then I think the funding came and I think somebody came in with a lot of funding, a lot of funding and he said, well, Tommy, I'm going to go ahead and go with some stars. I got the money. And I, I said, okay. And then it, there's another time where I'm I'm hustling. And uh, dope out of one door, girls out of another door. And uh, and man, got popped a couple of times. I was hard hit. I didn't want to quit. The lieutenant was like, I'm going to get you. I can't, man, I know, I know what's going on. Man, you the biggest headache I got. And we're going to bring you down. And I was starting to get multiple hotel rooms. I was like bouncing around. Truck stop was right up the street. I'm having girls go to truck, truck stops. The people want dope. They take it, serve them. They want dates. I'm, I've got everything you need. People were like breaking in the stuff, bringing me the goods. I'm dropping it off for the goods. I'm buying mink, mink coats with crack. And uh, man, I was going berserk. Then I had a house in South Memphis. I was going back and forth. I bought three, four, five cars. Had the box shed with the Lincoln. And they took that box shaver from me. I missed that box shaver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then you, everything that's the thing you missed the most. Man, and then they would low down. You know, they made me sort of like, you know, they took the money that I had in my pocket. The police basically stole the money I had, lied about what how much I had. Of course. Took the car, then charged me to get the car, and then when I got the car back, you know what I'm saying, I ended up like going to like their impound and all of a sudden it was set on fire 
was wow. mysteriously at set the, on fire at, at, the, police the, at the police impound. And man, so you're just like kind of going in and out. And they were just trying to like build a case on you. I got. And busted. so when they finally got like, what was the charge for the for the five man, years? Man, I got busted twice, and I knew that I couldn't let all those dope charges go up in the same courtroom. And I begged my lawyer, Mark Sarifkin, I begged my lawyer, do not let my charges go up in the same courtroom. They were small at first, but then that big bus, man, the chick, you know what I'm saying, she came in, I knew her from South Memphis. She was just getting out of jail. She bought some for me at my hotel room, stepped out, and then somebody came back knocking. And I had, uh, I had my girl Sunshine in the room at the time, and Sunshine, she was like, yo, who is this knocking, you know? And um, they get on my nerves, I said, don't open it. And um, I said, just ignore them. And she's like, oh, I'm tired of this. And she went and opened that door, and I know, her boom. And man, it's like she flew in the air <laughs> wow. a couple of feet. Damn. And man, they surrounded, they came in the room so fast. When you getting busted, Man, it's like a feeling that's like unreal. And they had this, like a lady, and then the other, then the officers, they just, man, tossed me on the bed. I was trying to run, I was trying to stash my stuff. They, man, pushed me on the bed, hit me in the back a couple of times, threw my hand behind my back. And I was like, what y'all, what do you want? What do you want? And they, man, started reaching, and I'm trying to duck, tuck stuff, kick stuff. And they were grabbing and grabbing. She's trying to flush stuff. They grab her, pull her out. This is what we want. And then they were starting to look for my money. And all the time I was like, what they looking for my money for? Come to find out she had brought me some mark money, but I didn't know. Yeah. So I was like, what they keep looking for my money for? They wanted the money more than the drugs. And I was like, what's going on? Because of Mark. And they, you know, and it was Mark. So they pulled me out. Took me right behind where Hustle and Flow was shooting at, behind the Chris Paddy. That's where the paddy wagon. And when I get in the paddy wagon, you know what I'm saying? They go the girl already in the paddy wagon that bought that for me. And I'm like, oh, you stupid. And she was like, I'm sorry, Tommy. I'm sorry, Tommy. I'm sorry. I didn't know. I didn't know. I said, you stupid. Damn. I said, I'm already on bond and I'm already on another bond. What you think this going to be? I said, man, he's, Pope Cobb was like, shut up. I said, man, you, I just kept saying you stupid 18 times. <laughs>